Hey YouTube, in this video we take a close look at guitar strings and string gauges and just what all these numbers mean. So if you're still unsure about what strings to buy when it's time to get a new set for your guitar, then stay tuned. Okay, strings and string gauges. Now if you're familiar with what these numbers mean and you've got your go-to set that you go to when you need a new set of strings, then perhaps this video isn't for you. I'm not introducing anything groundbreaking today. But if you are like I was, and you've played guitar for a little while, and yet buying new strings always seems to turn out a little bit like this, then maybe stick around. Wow. Help ya? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I think I need some new strings for my guitar. What sort of guitar is it? It's a, um, a black one. Electric or acoustic? Oh, uh, it, it's an electric guitar. What gauge? What, what, what? Gauge, what ga How thick? Um, regular? So yeah, it can be quite a daunting experience, especially if you're new. Hopefully, at the end of this video, all that mystery will disappear. Ultimately though, there is a lot of personal preference that comes into play when choosing your strings. There's really only three things to consider. One, what gauge are you going to use? That's how thick they are. Two, what brand, which manufacturer you're going to go with. And the third thing you may want to consider is material. What are they made out of? Okay, let's start with All right, let's start with string gauge now string gauge can be complicated to figure out But ultimately it's not that complicated. We're simply talking about thickness. How thick are the strings? The biggest challenge when referring to gauge is that different manufacturers different brands refer to them by different names the Dario for example use names like super light gauge medium light gauge, light gauge, that sort of thing. And brands like Ernie Ball use things like slinky, super slinky, uh, regular slinky, medium slinky, power slinky. So to keep things simple, we'll just stick to the numbers. The most common set of strings I refer to as nines, tens, or elevens. What do these numbers mean? Well, they refer to the thickness of the high E string. What we're simply saying is a set of nines the high E measures 9 one thousandth of an inch. On a set of 10s, the high E measures 10 one thousandths of an inch. And on a set of 11s, you can figure it out. And then the rest of the strings, your B, D, G, A, and E, also get thicker. Uh, and those numbers you can find on the front of the packs as well. And obviously, as you move between 9s, 10s, and 11s, the rest of them also go thicker in proportion. So how does the thickness impact which strings you should go with? The thinner the strings, the less tension there is required to get those strings into tune. That means thinner strings have less tension and therefore sit a little looser on the guitar, making them easier to play, especially when it comes to bending. So thicker strings then require more tension to get them up to that same pitch. That means they're going to sit a little tighter on the guitar and they're going to make things like bending just a little bit more trickier. Why would you want things to be more trickier? Light strings must be the way to go, right? Well, yes and no. Now, having said that they require less tension to get into tune, that also means they require less tension to be bent out of tune. That means if you've got a really heavy hand and you fret your chords really hard, the chances are that you will fret and detune some of those notes more easily. So perhaps a thicker set is better for you. Likewise, if you've got a really light touch, a really light grip, it's going to require a lot more tension from you to get those notes into pitch better. So maybe a lighter set is better for you. So how do you know where to start? Well generally, tens are a pretty solid place to start, but really consider just, just what's on your guitar already and ask yourself these three questions. Are you really struggling to bend notes? Are you struggling to fret 
chords? Do your hands hurt after playing for a while? If you answered yes to any of those questions, perhaps you need to go down. Now, if you're already on a set of tens, perhaps a set of nines is where you need to go to. The inverse is also true. Are you constantly fretting notes out of tune? Do you overbend a lot? Do you bend beyond the pitch of the note you're trying to get to without really trying? Do you use drop tunings a lot? And you notice once you drop it, your tuning stability is right out the window. Then perhaps you need to consider going up a gauge. And the second area we want to consider in this video is brand. There are a ton of different manufacturers out there and a lot of them are very good. I myself prefer either Diodario or Early Ball brand. I find both of these brands to be very good, cheap, consistent and well made. Not only that, but both brands are utilized and used by multiple artists across multiple genres all around the world. If I had to pick one, I generally use the Dario's. But as I said, across the globe, you will find major artists who swear by the Dario and who also swear by Ernie Ball. Maybe some good advice here is to find someone that you really like, find out what they use and just go with that. What you looking for? Yeah, hi. Uh, I need some new strings for my guitar. All right, what sort of guitar is it? Ah, it's an electric six-string guitar. Any particular gauge? Uh, I think I'll go with tens. Tens. Tens it is. Uh, brand? What brand are you looking for? Well, I am a big fan of uh, Mark Tremonti and Rob Chapman, and I know they use the Dario, so let's try the Dario today. Ooh, okay, sorry. It's your world, pal. I just work here. Uh, any particular type? What type? Um, tens? No, no, no. Type, type. You want XL, you want nickel, you want flat wounds, you want chromes, you want pro steels. Ah, so close, right? That leads us into the last thing we want to consider in this video, which is material. Just what are they made out of and what should you be looking out for? Now with your standard set of Ernie Balls or Daddario strings, they're nickel wound, which means they're wound with a nickel coating. But they do come in a variety of different coatings. You can get them with the same nickel wound, but they're ground down so that the tops are flat completely different feel, probably not what you're used to. They also come in coatings which claim to make them last longer and some of them work really well. Now of course all these additional coatings and material options that are out there, they make the strings more expensive. This standard set of the Dario strings will set you back around $10 to $15 New Zealand. Same with these Ernie Balls, in fact they're virtually the same price no matter where you go. But you add additional coatings to them, their price can almost double. So should you consider a string made out of something slightly unique, made out of a coating which makes them last longer, which sounds like a great deal, right? Except for the fact that they cost twice as much. Or should you just go with your standard nickel wound set of strings? What should you consider? These two things. How often do you plan on changing them? If you're just playing at home and you pick that guitar up once a week, maybe twice, perhaps you should think about getting a set of strings with some coating on them that lets them last a bit longer. That way, every time you pick the guitar up, it might feel like a newer guitar for just a little bit longer. Conversely, if you play much more regularly and you play in a situation where you're either recording or you're playing live regularly, you might want to consider changing them more often, which means putting a coating on a set of strings you're going to change every two or three days, or maybe once a week. It's a bit pointless, isn't it? And the other thing is just how comfortable are you changing them yourself? If you have to take your guitar into a shop to get someone to change them, then that's obviously going to make the whole situation cost a bit more. So maybe you want to extend that time by putting a set on there which lasts longer. However, if you're comfortable changing them yourself, go for the cheaper set. Whenever you need a new set, you can just chuck a new set on and you're away. Generally speaking, most of us are gonna want a set of the standard nickel wound strings on, so that's what I recommend. Overall, they're cheaper, they're more consistent, and they work well, and you'll be more familiar with them. There won't be any surprises when you throw them on your guitar. Lastly, my overall recommendation, and what do I use in terms of brand, gauge, 
and coating. Well, for the most part, I stick with Deodario, the standard XL set of Deodario strings. On my Fender, I use these. These are the nine gauge strings. On my Gretsch, which is the other guitar I use regularly, I use the 10 gauge. Well, I think that about wraps up everything we want to talk about in this video. Hopefully now, when you go to buy your next set of strings, you'll be able to walk into that guitar shop like a pro. 